it's not a real APC UPS unit unless the battery's swollen up. And I just thought I'd show everybody this fairly extreme one that I got a while back, where the batteries have actually swollen so much that the covers for the terminals have <laughs> you can see how they're all wonky and skewed because the batteries have swollen up vertically as well as horizontally enough to bend these metal chassis in there and they are well and truly stuck in there you are supposed to pull this tab to get them out but that is not happening that is not happening in a thousand years so I'm going to have to take this unit apart and see if I can maybe do something about that and I think I can put some fun in here too oh yeah Look at that nice corroded terminal there. Yeah. I don't think these batteries were ever replaced, and this is probably a 2005 or so model. So, <laughs> it's going to be fun to see how we'll look once we get them out. That's a nice friction grip there. You can see how the batteries are just squeezing against the chassis. Now the chassis has just gone a little bit round from the pressure. And here's a better view of those caps that are popping off. Wow. This is probably the worst pack I've ever seen. Alright, so I've loosened the PCB up here and taken the case off and it should leave a bit of flex room for the case, so let's see if we can get this thing out. Suppose not. Ah, there we go. Then over to the fat lady. Things round and cute and cuddly. Oh, wow! Look at that. <laughs> That's not very beautiful. Another one there, a little bubble. Strangely, nothing really protruding on the ends. They usually bulge up there as well. Oh well. This one's a gunner. I do like APC using this Anderson connection, this though. I always rip them out to fill the packs and reuse them. Although the fuse back here could be a different story. That does not look very healthy. Not very healthy at all. Well, maybe it'll clean out. We'll see. And just if you were curious, first for battery voltage across our 24 volt battery pack. Steadily dropping just from the load of a multimeter. And just for kicks, let's see what happens when we hook up a 20 watt light bulb. My bet is on zero volts. Yep. And for your viewing pleasure, the other bulb just on the underside of the battery. I don't think I've seen this before. Ha! That's pretty impressive. Oh, APC, 
all this nice high-end electronics and you can't build a battery charger. And well, or rather, you won't. Because that would mean people don't buy your batteries anymore. And if you deal with APC units on any kind of regular basis, you'll be happy to build one of these. This is simply just a huge low voltage cap with a Anderson connection on it, which I can charge up with any kind of power supply and just hook up to the UPS in order to go get it started without a battery and to set the charging voltage because the reason those batteries get all swollen and horrible is because APC's battery chargers are set to charge the batteries to about 13.8 volts per battery 20 something does something in a 24 volts pack and uh, that's just way too high well it's fine it gives you a couple more percent of run time but uh, it comes with the cost of a battery life of about a year and a half. But uh, thanks to how these units are constructed, you can just hook up a serial cable and throw in a couple of commands to reconfigure the ADC uh, calibration in order to lower the charging voltage since it's a software controlled charger. And you can bring the voltage down to, well, very low usually. Uh, in my home UPS down there which is hooked up to a couple of calcium car batteries I've got it set to 13.1 volts per battery and it's doing that just fine and those batteries have lasted me since 2009 or so and they show no signs of aging I do top them up every now and again so on these uh, units that I sell or intend to sell, I usually put the voltage somewhere around 13.5 volts per battery, since customers don't usually take the batteries out to top them off. And that will, well, that pretty much throws your battery life uh, lifetime from a year and a half to, well, three, four, five years, because the batteries just don't boil well away and uh, corrode. The problem you get when you put a too high a charging voltage is not solvation, because that's what happens when you discharge your battery too much, but you get corrosion and uh, overpressure as the uh, electrolyte boils away and you essentially get too much acid in the batteries. That will just uh, make the ESR of the battery go to hell and uh, everything will get hot and the battery swells up and then Finally, the UPS will go, no, sorry, I won't even turn on with these batteries because their ESI is too high, I can't detect them. But, uh, yeah, dealing with a slightly lower charging voltage and, uh, and uh, running the risk of uh, sulfating the batteries in a very long time period, which is, well, essentially so long that it doesn't matter. It's just a much better way of dealing with a problem, but it doesn't result in battery cells for APC, so I can understand why they do it the way they do, but I don't because I don't sell batteries. So let's jump start this thing, it's completely dead, dead right now, no signs of life. Also do you mind, if you work on one of these, this board is hot, essentially the entire back half of it could kill you if you touch it, so please don't do that. Anyway, I've got my power supply grounded and not connected, so let's jump start this thing. Hope you could hear that. And we're alive. Although if it's going to run a self-test, it's going to die. Well, sometimes they die, other times they just uh, manage to abort before the cap is drained. Let's see what this one does. I think it could save itself. Yep. Yeah. It saved itself. And wouldn't you know it, battery change 20th of November 2002. 
the manufacturing date of a unit. So I'm a bit skeptical that's actually when they replaced the batteries. There's a big possibility they just replaced them and didn't bother putting a new date in because, well, they didn't care. Right, so I mentioned you want to use, well, if you deal uh, any amount with uh, these APC smart UPSs, you want to make one of these capacitor adapters in place of the batteries. And the reason for that, I'm going to show you now, is that the capacitor has a lot faster response time than the battery does. So, when you want to calibrate the ADC on it, and adjust the charging voltage, which you can see here, which is uh, far too high. You want this to be somewhere around 27.12 volts or so. And uh, the way you adjust this is by putting the UPS... Well, first you need to hook it up with a uh, uh, serial cable, which I've done to my laptop here. And uh, you can connect to it by just starting a serial connection in putty or something equivalent and if you press Y it'll tell you it's a smart unit by t telling you SM and after you've done that, established your connection and made sure it's very secure you put the unit into configuration mode by pressing 1 and then waiting a couple of seconds and then pressing 1 again and you get a prog out of the unit and now you uh, want to do a normal battery voltage readout, which is a sending a capital B to the unit, which returns battery voltage. And uh, it suddenly says uh, 27.67, which is, well, pretty much uh, spot on as far as the resolution of this ADC goes. But uh, you want that to read incorrectly, since the charger is configured to keep it around there. And you want it to be lower, and there's no real way to reconfigure the charger. And uh, essentially, <laughs> the only thing we do is you use the plus and minus keys on your numpad to adjust this uh, constant. You can see the last constant was uh, E5. And by going up, you can uh, oh, just change the calibration level for the ADC until you get the voltage you want. But we want to adjust it until we get to about 27.2. And if we were to do this with uh, the battery pack installed, we'd have to wait several minutes between every adjustment to step in order for the batteries to catch up. And the batteries also put a small load on onto the charger when you change the voltage. So it's going to be very slow and uh, rather inaccurate setting the voltage that way. But this is an OK voltage. It's close to 27.3 and that's alright since it's going to drop just a little bit when we actually hook up a battery. And uh, once that's done you just uh, do a capital Y again. Yeah, you want to enter a dumb mode which is a capital R. There you go. Bye. And now it's out of programming mode as well. And if you do another you need to do another Y after you've done that in order to put it back into smart mode. It's, it's, it'll just be a, a dumb signal in UPS which won't tell you your battery level or anything like that unless your management software does a Y when you start the open the link with it. And that's it as far as calibrating the battery voltage of one of these things go. However, another thing you want to do is uh, if you get one of these units and you put new batteries in it, it won't calibrate properly unless you manually adjust the battery constant, which uh, essentially tells the unit uh, the uh, capacity of the batteries. And I, I haven't gotten any new batteries for this unit uh, yet, so I'm not going to bother doing that right now, but it, essentially it's uh, the same procedure, but you send the unit another command in order to adjust another variable and you just set the you set the variable to 
reflect the capacity of the batteries. You need to might need to experiment a bit on it. These values are pretty much uh, unique to each UPS or UPS model, and not a whole lot of them exist on the internet. Although you can find a lot of them for the older white units online. And uh, once you've done that, you pretty much have a new, new UPS unit to as far as battery capacity is concerned and better than new when it comes to charging voltage since it won't boil up, up your batteries yeah that's pretty much that for this unit I'm going to yeah, another thing with these uh, uh, black uh, 10, 1500 VA units you might want to check out these capacitors right there between the heat sinks. Some of them have electrolytic capacitors there and they tend to fail and when they do the unit will have a hard time switching over to battery. It, it will make a loud groaning noise uh, as if it was very heavily loaded even if it isn't and uh, that's just because those small capacitors there have failed and need to be replaced. It's no biggie. That's pretty much the only problem these units tend to run into, is uh, aside from the overcharging batteries. All more of these are pretty good units, although it would be nice to see a proper battery charger in them. And for anybody who's curious, here's my personal unit. It's one uh, very similar to one, the one I've been working on. It's a 1500VA unit, although this is slightly newer. I think it's made in 2006 and it's just uh, very crudely hooked up the front panel doesn't go on properly because I've taken the cables out and uh, I'm running it on 255 amp hour uh, calcium car batteries maintenance free back there and I think it's set to charge them to about 26.2 volts the last time I checked hang on let me check check right now well there you go my memory doesn't serve me right it's set to 26.6 or so I think I actually intended to set it to uh, 26.2 or so but back when I did this the setup I did not have a proper multimeter and just have these twenty dollar cheapy so yeah I could wager this error is probably due to the lack of absolute accuracy in that meter no it doesn't seem that way although I wouldn't recommend this meter either way